Hey there, how's it going? A few weeks ago, I released a video making a slime character, which I wanted to be the beginning of a new series where we make art for an ever-growing asset pack. In that video, I asked what you wanted to see next, and Skeleton won no bones about it. I'm sorry. As this is meant to be a continuing asset pack, the character will be made in a size of 32 by 32 pixels, and we'll continue to use the Endesga 16 color palette, which I'll have a link for in the description. So without further ado, let's start drawing. I began with a rough block out for the size I wanted for the head and the body. I personally like to give my characters larger heads and smaller bodies so they read a little bit better in-game. Very similar and kind of the same idea as the chibi art style you would see in anime. It just makes the characters look so cute. I erase and add to the block to create a skull shape that I like. Luckily skulls are fairly simple, so I threw in some eyes, a couple of dots for nose, and a little bit of shading to finish it up. The skull of this character will be the most visible part through all the animations, so I want to make sure that it's very clear and clean in the way it reads. Usually a shape like this doesn't come together quite this easy, but when it does, I take it where I can get it because I'm pretty happy with this. With the skull finished, I remove the block body placeholder and start on the new skeleton torso. I generally find skeletons to be tough in pixel art because they're thin, something that pixel art struggles with at smaller sizes. I sketch in a rough idea of the body and use the shadow color from the skull to show ribs and separation between areas like the pelvis. Then I add in the outline and a little more shading to help find the final shapes. Okay, real fast, I want to take a quick second to give a shout out to Woka, who sent me a brand new motorized standing sit desk to try out. It arrived right in the middle of working on this character, and I took a quick break because I was super excited to just redo my whole desk setup, and oh my goodness, it's so nice. Building the desk was super easy, and I absolutely love the height memory buttons. This means I can find the absolute best height that I want to work at, set it to a button, and then I can jump between standing, sitting, and whatnot with a single button press. I've lived with a bad back my whole life, and sitting all day has never been great for it. So I try to stand and sit quite often throughout the day, and not having to fidget around to get the height right is absolutely fantastic and makes transitioning so easy. They have multiple colors, fast shipping, and great customer service, which I found out when I somehow accidentally ordered the wrong color originally. If you like this kind of desk and it's something you'd be interested, there's a link in the description for you to check out. And with our fancy new setup, back to the animation. Now that I'm happy with the way the skeleton looks, it's time to move on to the animation. Personally, I always start with the idle animation because I'm going to end up reusing a lot of those frames as bases for the other animations as well. To make animating easier, I separate some of the body parts to their own layers. I mainly focus on animating one part of the body at a time. Get the head moving how I want it, then the legs and the torso, and then finally the arms. Alright, once the idle is looking good, it's time for everyone's favorite part, the run cycle. I copy over all the idle frames to have the up and down bobbing in place. Then I remove the legs from all the frames, and I just draw lines to figure out where the placement's going to be. I struggle with run cycles like most, but this is the best way I've found to make one from scratch. I turn off the background layer I had on so we can see the onion skinning. If you've never heard the term before, onion skinning is a way of seeing other frames overlaid on the one you're working on to help you guide your animation. Here, I'm just running the default from A Sprite, which shows me the frame before and the frame after in a lighter opacity. Being able to see where the limb has come from and where it's going makes it really convenient to just kind of keep messing with it until it all starts to feel good. I also find that using two colors really helps to separate which leg is forward and which one is backwards so you can animate properly. With the wireframe animation in, it's time to give the skeleton back their legs. I copy leg sections from the idle poses and then manipulate them to follow along with the guide. Now that the legs are in a good place, the arms need to move as well. With arms in a walker run cycle, the main thing to remember is that it's opposite the leg it shares a side with. So if the left leg is forward, the left arm should be back and vice versa. With the walk in a good place, let's set up the jump and fall. Once again, I begin with a base from the idle, and now I can start pulling elements from the run also. Frame by frame animation takes time, and anything you can do to reuse pieces that you've already made will really help speed up your workflow. For the jump, I give a quick crouch, and then the face tilts up slightly, and I bring the whole thing up a little. The frame for the apex of the jump has the skeleton with its limbs out and its face looking forward. For the fall frames, the body is moved into a position where it looks like it's prepping to land. I'm giving the skeleton the typical skeleton attack animation, which is throwing a bone. So I pull the body back and up to show some anticipation frames to signal what's going to happen, and then a quick jump to the skeleton with its arm extended and its leg forward. The quick jump between the frames sells the speed and momentum needed to throw a projectile. Then we go back to smaller increments in the movement for the recovery frames to really sell that speed. That's the attack done, let's keep plugging along. A common trope in video games is skeletons die and end up coming back to life. So for this death animation, I wanted to leave that as an option at the end. I split the limbs apart and have them tumble to the ground with the skull landing on top. This leaves it on a frame that can easily lay dormant for a second or two before popping back up if the developer wants to do that. Or you can just make it disappear or poof with some particles. And last but not least, we have the hit animation, which usually go by so fast they don't need to be super intricate. I pulled the limbs out and flash it back and forth with inverting colors. 
The inverted frames don't need to be used, of course, if they don't fit with the rest of the game's style. I almost forgot to make the projectile for the attack, which of course is a bone. This was pretty simple. On a 16x16 16 16 canvas, I made a bone and rotated and flipped it until it looked like it was spinning. And this is the finished skeleton. It came out super cute, and I really like it. I've added it to the demo I made for the slime, so now you can spawn and destroy both characters to your heart's content. Also, the skeletons will just randomly attack every now and then, and if the bone hits another character, it'll die to show off how that could work. I just find it cute to watch them run around and throw stuff. The link to the itch page is in the description, and you're free to use these assets in any project, free or commercial, with or without credit. Although credit is always appreciated, it's not necessary. Basically, I just ask that you don't sell or repost them as they are, and you're all good. If you do make anything with them, please let me know, I would absolutely love to check it out. And if you have any ideas for what we should be making next, please put them in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'd like to give an extra special shout out to my amazing patrons, especially Aliakam, Clone13, Cortland Massam, David Scott, Nightfall, Jed Jed, Kevin Halgau, Cormai, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome people, and I truly appreciate the support. If you want to get into contact with me, the best place is honestly on my live streams at twitch.tv slash vimlark, or you can join our Discord with a lot of other amazingly fantastic people. I hope you've enjoyed this look into the way that I create and animate a character, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.